Brian. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Let's take a look at what we got going on. All right, first thing, uh, CPI was obviously higher today. Um, we'll take a look at that, higher than anticipated. Uh, the 10-year Treasury rate right now is 4.17%. Uh, percent. We have the ES Mini trading down about 2 percentage points right now. Uh, the Russell off almost 5%, trading down 4.6%. NQ's down 2.18%. The Dow Futures down roughly 2% as well. Uh, the gold contract on its way down, trading at 2005 right now. Uh, obviously had a few days of, well, let's just say, basically today, um, huge volume to the downside here. Uh, pretty impressive on that. Take a look at silver down equally about 3%. I'm going to take this off the uh, two-week. Uh, looking at copper, that is also down, although moderately trading down 0.52%. And then crude oil, we're actually up today, uh, trading 77.72 a barrel. Uh, that's on the futures contract. We take a look at the dollar. Uh, you know, we had been pretty consistent at that 104 level, and it looks like we're making our way up at least to touch uh, the 105 level in the dollar. Uh, Meta down 166 today. Let's take a look at the SPY as well. Trading down about 2%. We're at 491. You were in the den. Tom was also talking about the SPY. Uh, he says... Um, but basically, 49 to 42 in the SPY is where, the, as he says, the fat lady sings, and we'll see what we can do at that pullback level. Um, would be kind of interesting to see it pull back to that because I feel like that would be a perfect spot to get in. I mean, we've been making all-time highs consistently. This is on the idea that we're going to see some kind of rate cut at some point this year. Uh, obviously, CPI was pretty rough, and we can let's look at it, right? Because I had been speaking, I think, in the beginning, uh, at least of January, there was some news that would suggest volatility in energy prices, right? Which is not included in the core CPI, but still it would have contributed to a higher CPI. We actually didn't see uh, as, as big of a jump in kind of crude as, as kind of I expected, right? As the days went on, you, you saw a lot of stability, of course, trading up like 77 now. But we were hanging around that 72 level in uh, crude oil. And actually what really uh, contributed to higher CPI today um, – was the core. So let's take a look here and we can talk about it. All right, so obviously food and energy get cut out of the core CPI just because it's volatile. Um, really, your big moves here were food away from home, up 5.1%. We spoke about that a little bit, uh, especially when we were talking about the comments that the uh, McDonald's CEO had made, right? That, you know, prices are just going higher and we need to really figure out um, what to do about that. Limited service meals and snacks up 5.8%. That's a 12-month percentage change. Uh, all these figures are, okay, so we had some movements up in these. Uh, natural gas piped actually down 17.8%. Gasoline all types down 6.4%. Now, this is, of course, on the 12-month. Uh, and then fuel oil down 14.2%. Over the 12-month percent change, one of the highest contributors to this kind of weighting that we saw today was shelter up 6%, rent rent up 6.1%, owner's equivalent of rent re residences, 62 and then what blew my mind really is motor vehicle insurance. And now I think at the end of last year, we were really talking about that quite a bit. Um, but even on my end, I got hit twice on increase to my premium because I moved and um, just my age as well. Uh, it's pretty insane. So, you know, if we take a look at... Uh, we had going on, it was 3.1% total, and then it's actually something like 3.4% uh, on the core, which is, you know, intense, right? So, I mean, you have this, like, actual, you know, pressing issue that's not just due to volatile products. It'd be interesting to see, you know, you had Powell said at the last Fed meeting uh, that they need to wait to gather more data before they can make a decision on rate cuts. It for sure wasn't going to occur in March or any time before then, and, uh, you know, again, I think the problem is this pushes out the horizon, as I've been saying, right? So, so what does it mean for the market making these all-time highs? I mean, I think you're seeing this in the pullback currently, right? And people are going to try to probably position, and I, I say people as in like these large investors, probably have to kind of figure out how they want to pivot themselves on this. Speaking of things that really weren't super hit in any capacity, I mean, NVIDIA is only down 0.82% today. 
Still cooking strong at 716. I want to see what ARM's doing um, because I haven't checked it uh, this week. So down pretty significantly as well at 17.84%. You know, you had big investment from SoftBank on this. They, that really contributed to the increase in the price. You know, that can be worrying sometimes. But what I would say with ARM too is this is the only company that's making these chips, right? And this is the stuff that goes into your phones. Um, I mean, that's obviously a pretty significant drop, um, of course, following a pretty significant rise, and we're still shaking out uh, far above uh, where we're at, trading around this $73, $74 area, um, you know, before this shoot up and then subsequent pullback. I'm going to be following this for the rest of the week and kind of seeing, you know, what the market wants to do uh, with that. Um, anyways, pretty, uh, pretty kind of insane movement uh, in the market today. You're talking a little bit about that car insurance premium um, because I was curious about this as well. And there was a bunch of articles going on regarding all of it. So let's talk about this. American motorists are spending less on fuel than a year ago, but any savings are likely being uh, basically absorbed by soaring car insurance premiums. While the prices at the pump in December were nearly 2% lower than a year ago, auto insurance rates jumped 20% over that same period. This is, of course, from that Labor Department data. That was released on Thursday of last uh, week. Insurance coverage far outpaced the rate of inflation, rising six times faster than consumer prices overall last year. And that was the thing. When, I, when the agent called me, uh, he was like, hey, man, yeah, it's just like inflation and that and you move, so you're getting hit twice. But, you know, I wanted to kind of give him a hard time, even though it's not really his fault, and be like, well, you know, I'll go look somewhere else then. But you're, you're, they're not competitive. I mean, for the coverage that, you know, I need and everything, and you're not going to get anything lower. And it's kind of a shame with that. Several factors are driving up the cost of car insurance, including uh, lingering issues from the pandemic. Vehicles are more expensive and costlier to repair. And then inflation also drives up the cost of computer components and other parts required for repairs. And this is only going to get more complex, right? These additions to different kind of like edge computing on the, comp uh, on the car. Um, I mean, you're going to see a lot of weird things in the coming years on that. I can talk a little bit about that maybe at the end of the show. Uh, anyways, also a shortage of mechanics is, is a huge thing as well. Uh, folks, stay tuned. Uh, we have Basil Chapman on today, and then uh, that's going to be followed by Tim Ord. I'm sure both of them are going to have some pretty interesting things to talk about uh, regarding today. So, folks, stay right there, and uh, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors